Hi, welcome to Gravitate. This week, we wanted to think about stories, to share some of our stories, and perhaps give you a chance to think about what your story is. This morning, you were going to see all of the Gravitate leaders telling some of their story, specifically answering the questions, why are you a Christian and what difference does it make in your life? Hello, uh, my name's John. So why am I a Christian? Uh, well, when I was born, <laughs> I was born into a Christian family, possibly like a lot of you. And I always used to think that's a rubbish testimony. That's a rubbish backstory. Um, it just means that, you know, I was brought to church and that's why I'm a Christian. Um, but a few years later, quite a few years later, um, I realised that the biggest benefit of me being born into a Christian family is that since day one, I've always known that my parents love me and that God loves me because of the way my parents love me. So why am I a Christian? Well, to put it really basically, because I was shown God's love by a lot of people and then I went on to experience God's love for myself. And that sounds really airy fairy and a bit a bit, you know, wishy washy. But it's true. And um, there's been times in my life definitely where I've not been following God, where I've been actually like consciously saying, I don't want anything to do with you. And when I've come back, I've really known the difference in my life that love makes and that and that really being cherished and and yeah and just loved so if you've got parents who are christians um appreciate them and appreciate that they're loving you uh, as best they can uh, in the way that god loves you and maybe talk to them about that what difference does being a christian make in my life every difference so being a christian for me changes the way everything works it isn't just a ticket to heaven it isn't just a badge that you wear on a sunday being a christian means uh, that that you follow someone who has your best interests at heart, but also has the world's best interests at heart. So I think I'm a really strong believer that if you don't follow Jesus, you're following something else, whether it be the rest of the world's pressures, whether it be your, your own sort of ideas, you're choosing to follow other things. And that puts pressure onto you because ultimately other things don't have all the answers. They get complicated. They change. Uh, there's very little stability, as we're seeing like in the world at the moment. But also, I think that their demands are quite high of you. Um, you know, if you follow like culture and, and uh, like popularity and success, the demands are so high and, and they never get met. Whereas when you follow Jesus, he's pretty straightforward. He says, love me love God, love each other, be loved. That's how you get life to the full. And that's really attractive to me. That's like, great. So what I have to do in my life is love God and then essentially do what I want because I know that all my other actions will come out of me loving God. So that's the difference that being a Christian makes in my life. It means that day to day, I know more who I am uh, that I'm loved, that I'm a child uh, of, of God, that, um, yeah, I've got brothers and sisters who I haven't even met. Um, but also it means that I know that I'm meant to love others and act in that way. For me, a lot of it comes down to my identity. I'm not the most confident person. As a teenager, I struggled a lot with my self-esteem. I was a bit nerdy, I didn't feel like I fit in very well, and I worried a lot that my friends didn't really like me. As an adult, I've experienced periods of anxiety. Fear and worry and anxiety are my go-to responses to any change or stress in my life. I became a Christian when I was 12. I began a relationship with God and started to learn what it means to be a dearly loved child of God. As a teenager, that meant that when I questioned my worth and my value, and whether people really like me at all, I could remind myself that the creator of the universe thought I was pretty great. So everyone else's opinion didn't really matter. 1 John chapter 4 verse 9 says, This is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only son into the world that we might live through him. God loves me. And I know that because he sent Jesus. As an adult, when I'm struggling with fear and worry and anxiety, I know two things. One, that I'm not alone facing any of it. God is with me and he is definitely big enough to deal with whatever I'm afraid of. And two, that while the future might be an unknown, terrifying mystery, the one who's in charge of it isn't. My future is secure with God and I do know him. Romans 8 says, 
For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Nothing, nothing can separate us from God and his love for us. So what difference does being a Christian make in my life? I know that I'm a dearly loved child of God. I know that he is always with me and I know that my future is safe with him. Hi, I'm Gemma. I think most of you know me anyway, but um, I became a Christian when I was 16. So I'm from a non-Christian family. I started going to church at 11 because my friend invited me and I went on and off for a bit. And then at 16, uh, something, a couple of things happened that year and I decided then that I wanted to kind of really do this Jesus thing right. Um, so one of the things that happened was I had this um, desire for something more to life. So we'd gone through a really hard few years and there was a lot of pain and a lot of sadness. And I think there was something in me that said there's got to be more to life than this. Um, yeah, things were really hard and pretty pants. And actually, I think I was like, there has to be more. This, this can't just be what life is about or what life is. Um, and through kind of things that I'd learnt when I was at church, through bits of the Bible that I'd read, through talking to my friend and her family, I think I realised that actually this wasn't just what life was about, that there was more to life, that was, there was this, this real hope and, and that that was found in Jesus. Um, and I think, so I think that combined with the way that my friend loved me when I was really unlovable and the example of Jesus that she was to me which kind of showed me that this Jesus thing this faith thing was real really kind of convinced me that that Christianity was the way to go that it was that it was real everything that it said it it had done and does was true um I was really horrible to my friend and yet she found a way and her family actually and they, and they all found a way to love me and to forgive me and to welcome me and back to her family and and there was real power in that i thought um particularly as someone who held a lot of grudges and i think yeah the two things combined this um this realization that, that there had to be something more to life and, and the power and the hope that came from from becky and her family i think combined together really convinced me that that Jesus was the way to go and I think hope and power are a really big thing that kind of has changed my life because of Jesus I think um, the biggest difference I see in my life from then to now is just my perspective on on the way that life happens and what happens in life um, I think I see it particularly because I have a lot of non-Christian friends and non-Christian family and so when disaster or pain or sorrow come I think my perspective is much greater than theirs. I think um, Jesus gives me a hope, a light even in the darkest places that I can hold on to and cling to and know is there whereas they don't have that. I think my perspective on what is success and what is good has changed I think my desire to to be successful is kind of I'm still battling with it but I think it's definitely lessened and I think um I'm much more content with how my life is now than I ever was or would have been in this situation if I didn't know Jesus. Hi Gravite, really good to see you. My name is Ben, I'm a student at the University of Exeter. I'm going into my fourth year now of a civil engineering degree, so that's about bridges and water and soil and other really exciting things. And so today I was just kind of asked to talk about myself so you guys can get to know me, talk about my faith a little bit. And I guess you would start by just saying that I grew up in a Christian home, Christian family, and I was very lucky to grow up going to church. And I also grew up going to this wonderful event in the north of England in the Lake District called the Keswick Convention. And I went to the kids groups when I was there, where we would kind of just learn from the Bible, sing songs, play silly games. One year, my leader was actually Mark Barlow, who goes to Belmont. And yeah, that was a really great background for me. My church and the Keswick Convention meant that I learned a lot about God from the Bible. I knew the stories, that kind of thing. And it wasn't until a few years later that I went to this event called Soul Survivor in the south southwest of England, actually. 
And that was where I kind of first encountered the Holy Spirit. And that was where I saw God really moving amongst his people. I actually saw a sort of, I felt a sort of tangible presence of the Lord and not just prayer and the Bible and things like this. And then after that event, I kind of thought, well, surely if we can feel everything, this is the only way to do Christianity. And so my faith changed a bit and I was kind of like, my church is so boring compared to Soul Survivor. And it wasn't until a few years later that I realised that actually life isn't always like Soul Survivor and you're not always surrounded by 10,000 other Christians and things like that. And after I finished sixth form or college, I took a gap year between that and university and I travelled a bit and then I went and worked on a summer camp. And honestly, the amount of difference that that summer camp has made in my life is humongous. It's huge. It was a Christian camp, a Salvation Army camp in the beautiful state of Colorado in the United States. And um, it was there that I just got to talk to kids about Jesus and I got to um, minister to quite naughty children in a beautiful, beautiful part of the world, like run activities, do all this. And it was there that I kind of solidified my faith. I think my faith suddenly become real and I tied together all the ideas that I'd grown up with of like the Bible and prayer, but also God being a tangible presence and spirit and seeing how God can actually work in our lives and actually, you know, really do things in real life and not just in our heads or not just in like you know the bible and books and far away things but in my life and in the people around me's life god was moving and we could see it and so that's kind of my faith and that brings me kind of up to now after that camp i went to university i went back to that camp twice as well two other summers couldn't do it this summer because well but um yeah and that was kind of the background of my faith and that's where i am now uh, trying to tie together everything and read the Bible and learn more about God. And really, um, I think the best summary of sort of why I've held on to my faith the way I have is when you look through the book of Psalms, as I did last year, I highlighted every time the word refuge came up. And a refuge is somewhere you can kind of go uh, to take shelter, to be safe, uh, to escape the storms and just, yeah, be safe, be, be somewhere where you know that you will be protected and that is what God is. And that's what the book of Psalms talks about God being. And throughout my life, I have been very lucky not to deal with much adversity, to be honest. But when I have, it's usually come in the form of anxiety. And I've had really bad anxiety in the past. And um, God has been a refuge. God has been somewhere, uh, someone to whom I can always go and lift up and just say, hey, God, I'm having a tough time. And that's what people do in the Bible as well, in, in laments, in Psalms and in lots of places. And also, as well as that, thankfully, because I've read my Bible and things like this, I also know and I'm conscious of all the wonderful blessings that God has given me. I look back and see the ways that he's been working. And honestly, I just can't imagine a life without Jesus. And it is fantastic to have him by my side at all times. And that's my faith, really. Hopefully in the coming months, you'll get to know me more. I'll see you soon. Hello everyone, so why am I a Christian? Um, so I could probably tell you this in a load of different ways, but let's do it in a factual way first. So the first kind of factual thing is that I think that God definitely exists. And that's because when you look at his creation, when you look at this world, it's so perfectly made for us to live on it. Someone once told me that the probability of us surviving on a planet is like having pennies that cover the whole earth and each of these pennies stacks up to sort of seven. And the probability of finding another planet that we can exist on is finding one of those pennies on our whole Earth. So it's, you know, really tiny probability that there'd be another place that we could exist on. And so I just think that shows God because he, he hasn't made this world by coincidence. This world is clearly made um, for a reason, and that shows that God exists. Second thing is that I think that Jesus definitely existed, but also that he definitely came back to life. And if he came back to life, it shows that he is God. And so the reason I think that is because, firstly, the Bible tells us that there was 500 witnesses that said that Jesus came back to life, that they saw him. And the second thing is that the Christians back then were being killed for telling people that Jesus had come back to life. So if he didn't really come back to life, why would they be wanting to tell people um, and get killed? Because if they did, they were dying for something that 
they didn't really think happened. There would be no reason to. They get nothing out of telling people that Jesus came back to life. So that's my two kind of facts. But the other reason that I'm a Christian is because I get to have a relationship with God. And that's a really amazing thing. And this God loves us so much that he sent his son for us. Yeah, and I get to have a relationship with him. Um, yeah, and the more that we get to know God, the more that we build up this relationship with him, the more God becomes a real sort of being and a real God to us. And that's just really cool. So how does God actually affect my life? I'll give you four things, but there's probably loads more. So the first thing is that I am right with God. So because Jesus died for me, God sees me as right. He sees me as a child of God and I'm at peace with God. And that's a really great thing. So it's a little bit like sunbathing when you just enjoy the sun. But I can kind of enjoy being God's child and him um, and me being in right standing with him. So that's the first thing. Second thing is I get to have a relationship with him. So I can talk to him all the time about anything that's going on. But also he talks to me through his word, through his Bible. So the best thing is, is when I'm reading the Bible and suddenly um, there's things that I've, I've never thought of. And you, you just sit there and you think, oh, wow, God, you've really spoken to me. So that's really cool. Um, third thing is that God is always in control. So whether things are going well in life or whether things are really rubbish, I know that I can trust that God is in control and that actually I can trust in this God because he is amazing and if he loves me that much then I don't have to worry so much about what's going on because I know that he's in charge of it. And the last thing is I have an eternal hope. So you probably hear this all the time with you know faith and Christianity that we have this eternal hope of heaven. So we will be in eternity with God, which will be amazing, and eventually we'll be in a new creation with him. We will be perfect, and we'll be with God's people, and we'll be with him, and it'll be the best thing that we've ever experienced, and um, yeah, it will be amazing. So yeah, so that's the reasons why I'm a Christian, and why it affects my life. Bye. Okay, so you've heard a lot of stories about us, and how we became Christians, why we're Christians, and what difference knowing Jesus makes to our lives. But now it's your turn to think about those things too. Are you a Christian? Do you know Jesus? Is that real for you? If so, why? Why have you decided to put your faith in Jesus? If you haven't, maybe think why you haven't decided to put your faith in Jesus. What's stopping you from believing and trusting and doing life with him? Secondly, what difference, if you do know Jesus, does knowing Jesus make to your life? How has Jesus changed you? How has he maybe shifted your perspective or made you see things differently? How has he changed who you are as a person? How has he made you care for others better? If you um, don't know the answer to those questions, that's totally fine. But why not spend some time this week thinking about those things? Also, why not ask other people in your life who you know know Jesus, those questions too. Ask them why they believe in Jesus and what difference has Jesus made to their lives because actually it's a really helpful thing for us to think about. I'm going to pray for us before we go but I hope that today has been really encouraging and really helpful for you. Let's pray shall we? Lord Jesus, we thank you that we each have our own story and that those stories are just um, evidence of how faithful and good you are. Lord, I thank you that you love us. Even when we didn't love you, you loved us and you died for us. You wanted us, you've chosen us and you want to be in relationship with us. Lord, I pray that if we aren't in relationship with you, if we don't recognise you um, as our saviour yet, Lord, that you'll show us more reasons why we can trust you. And Lord, if we do, if we've decided that we want to do life with you, Lord, I pray that you'll give us more reasons to do more life with you, that you'll help us to see why we trust you, uh, what difference you make to our lives. And Lord, I pray that you continue to change us and mould us and shape us more into your likeness. 
Lord, we thank you for your faithfulness, for the fact that you loved us first and the fact that there is nothing that we can do on this earth to make you love us any more or any less. Lord, I pray that you'll be with us this week, that you will help us to ask the people in our lives these questions and that that will be encouraging and challenging for us too. Be with us this week, I pray. Amen. Well, thanks for joining us. I hope you have a wonderful week. Goodbye.